All righty, I am going to show you, that's that going on? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to manipulate a photo a little bit. Um, as far as making something look nicer. Um, we're not so much taking the photo and adding layers or adding anything, we're just making it look better. I mean, so I pulled this photo of Benedict Cumberbatch because he's awesome and he's in Sherlock. And if you don't watch Sherlock, you should anyway. Um, so, he's, this is a pretty good photo anyway, and it's got lots of color in it, um, but it's still got a lot of neutrals. So, let's do this. Let's start by showing you this part in layer, and you're going to go to new adjustment layer. And what this does is this adds a layer um, with the change in color on it. So you can turn it on and off or delete it. Um, so you, the first one is levels. Levels is kind of a, your basic go-to. You can play around with your mid-tones, your light tones, and your dark tones. Um, the problem with this is, and this is a mistake that a lot of people make, you don't want something called hot spots. Hot spots are spaces where the white is just completely filling an area. Um, you're deleting information, and this is, doesn't actually look that good. Um, we want to not have any hot spots, so I'm going to pull this there. Now we don't have any hot spots. Maybe right here, just a slight bit, but not very much. No hot spots in your pictures because they look overexposed, like they've got too much light in them. So I can say, okay, I want a little bit darker, and that's good. So, okay, here's my adjustment layer, and then I can flick it on and off with this little eye here. And if I don't like that, say I don't like that, I'm going to go up to my little drop down right here, and then to say delete layer. I can delete that layer and say yes, and we're back to our original. And also in our new adjustment layer, we have lots of other things. We have curves. Curves is a bit more advanced of a way of doing things. You can pull and drag things. I don't usually like its results, but and I usually just use the other a combination of other things. But if you like this way to do it, that is totally okay with you. It's totally up to your preference. Um, also, the opposite of a hot spot is these dark, dark patches. Those are boring. Um, except in some cases. They're, you know, and you want a little bit of texture and information in that in those black spots. You can have a few like here and here. Those are dropped all the way to black, but you want to leave some something to be seen. Um, the more dark spots and hot spots that you have, the more dramatic it's going to look. So I can click okay and then I can delete that layer too. And let's see what else we have in our toolbox. New adjustment layer. Um, color balance. Color balance is, say you have a picture that just looks too blue. You can change the level of cyan and red, magenta to green, and yellow to blue. This is another way of making photos look antique. You can play around with these. Um, to make them look like an old Polaroid. Polaroids kind of usually have a lot of red and blue in them. Um, some old cameras have a lot of yellow, if you want like kind of a 60s sort of color to it. And you have a lot of magenta and yellow. So I'm going to delete that one and turn it off, but I'm going to delete it again. Okay, um, what else do we have? We have brightness and contrast. Brightness and contrast is exactly what it sounds like. Brightness, so how bright the image is. This is like if you have hot spots in your image, you can pull the brightness down a little bit. Um, I can't guarantee that you'll get much more information in that, that space if you started with a hot spot because there isn't any information but white in there anyway. Um, but you can always try it. Um, as for contrast, contrast makes your lights lighter and your darks darker. Um, if you pull it down, it equalizes it. I'm just going to turn that off. Actually, I'm going to get out of this. Delete layer. Yes, okay. There. 
New adjustment layer, we can do black and white. Change it to black and white. And you can play around with these. Say you just want, you want to leave your You, see, you get the idea. You can play around with the different channels of what you're making darker. Um, something you just have to dink around with for a while and see what it does. Um, let's see here. We have hue and saturation. Hue and saturation is much like color, ma color balance. Um, you can change the hue like this, which is really kind of strange and Technicolor, kind of Andy Warhol-ish thing to do. Um, you can play with the saturation. So we can make him like Marilyn Monroe kind of thing. Um, lots of things you can do with that. But if you don't want even, you don't even have to use it in, in such a dramatic fashion. You can just pull up the saturation a little bit and make things look extra vivid. Okay, um, let's cancel that. And what else do we have? We have selective color. Okay, so selective color might be that if I wanted to make these greens greener, I could go to my greens, green channel, and then pull up my yellow and my cyan. Or if I wanted to make it less magenta, darker. This isn't doing much for me, um, but depending on your image these are going to do more have more dramatic effects I could take my blacks and pull up the magenta that's another way of um, making things look antique so you can do that and I could take my neutrals and pull the yellow out okay also I have a thing called photo filter Photo filter is if you have an image that is too warm or too cool, or if you just want to add a nice little subtle filter to it, like sepia, you can you can also change the density of it too. So like I can add a little bit of sepia, or I can add you know, a lot of sepia. Um, just a light, slight hint is sometimes nice. It warms up the image. Um, so deep red. That image doesn't work. That doesn't work very good for this image, but maybe deep yellow will. So anyway, you can play around with those. Um, layer. Adjustment layer. There's exposure. Exposure is how bright your image is. You can pull this up and down, and it also has some other um, things. You can, like if your shadows are too dark, you can pull those up, and you can just play around with it. There's really only one way to get what you want and that's to play with it until it looks right. <laughs> as uh, tedious as that can be on the start, um, you'll get the hang of it. What else do we have? And you can also have more than one adjustment layer. It's not, I'm just deleting them as I go, but you can have multiple and you can flick them on and off and see what they look like. Um, one last thing, invert is your negative. Um, I don't like these. They're kind of dumb, um, <laughs> to put it bluntly. I'll delete that layer. Um, if you ever needed it, that's where it is. Also, there is threshold. Threshold kind of turns it into a stamp in a strange way. Um, sometimes this is useful for, um, say, printmaking, but for now, we're not going to use this. Uh, adjustment layer. Posterize. This is a fun filter. This is not one that you would do every single time. If you're submitting your final images that are posterized, I want you to stop doing that. Um, but if you can do this on your own time, if you want to use it, um, you can pull your levels into different amounts. But what it does is it takes pixels that are similar and makes them all one color. Um, I don't particularly care for this unless you're making like a Facebook 
pit photo or something. So, say I want to make him look just a little bit more dramatic. I'm just going to do layer, new adjustment layer, um, new saturation. And I'm going to pull the saturation up a little bit. Just to make him a little more colorful. And hue is fine. I'm going to leave that at near zero. And uh, I'm going to pull the lightness down just as hair. And then I'm also going to do new adjustment layer. Let's do brightness and contrast. I'll pull the contrast up just a hair. There, I kind of like that. Okay, that's good for me. And say I wanted to make this the final image. I don't want any more of this. I just want my image. You can do something called merge Flatten image. Flatten image or merge down, either one works. Um, flatten image, it's all one image. Here we go. Um, how to export as a JPEG. Let's do this. Let's go File, Save As, and usually this will say Photoshop. We want to change this to JPEG. And I would also recommend changing your title to, say, Edited, Edit 1. Okay, um, then you click save, and depending on what you're using it for, you usually want high. High is good for just about everything, unless you're going to print it really, really big, then you want maximum. High is usually pretty good though. If you save it as maximum, it's, it takes a really long time to email and load up. Um, so I'm going to do high, and then this is fine. Okay, um, if you, say, didn't care about keeping your background image so that you could flick back and forth between layers, you can also do all of that stuff in image and adjustments. All of this is here as well. Um, mode, you can change it to grayscale right here. Um, if you just want to make it black and white, that's another way to do it. Um, I think that is about it. And just play around with it and see what you get, and good luck!